Now let's come back to the peak controller for a moment here and explore its interface in a little bit more detail now that we have it linked to a parameter and we can hear what our changes are doing. The peak controller is broadly divided into two sections, the peak section and the LFO section. The most important of these is the peak section. The base value simply determines the default value for whatever parameter you're modulating. The volume parameter determines how much the peaks coming out of the peak controller will increase the parameter. The tension parameter allows you to define a curve, which further defines how peaks in the audio data will affect the outgoing modulation. The decay parameter affects the decay of the peak that is generated by the peak controller. It's all well and good to describe these parameters in a theoretical sense, but it's really best just to experiment with them. So if I play the beat back and bring up the bass value, the modulation will be more pronounced. The volume parameter will have a similar effect. The decay parameter has a similar effect, but it affects the tail of the modulation rather than the input level. Sometimes it won't have any effect depending on what your volume and bass parameters are doing, so it's best to experiment with a wide range of settings until the modulation sits just right in your mix. The LFO section works like any other LFO, and you can think of it as generating a signal which is added to the peak value up here. It's got all the standard controls for an LFO, including shapes, speed, or rate as it's usually called, and it's also got the familiar bass and volume controls from the peak section, which allow you to define how much the LFO is actually adding to the peak value up here. All of this might seem overwhelming at first, but in the end it's just a detailed way to take an audio signal and turn it into a signal that can actually modulate a parameter such as cut down here. Here are some interesting settings for the cut knob on the delay unit that allow me to kind of stagger how the delay comes in and out over the beat. As I move the decay knob around, you can see that the modulation occurs and resets itself far more quickly. So now that we've taken a look at the peak controller, let's use a couple more of them on the beat in other places in order to add more dynamics. We're done with the delay unit for now, so I'll close that out. And now we can focus on modulating the reverb. I think now I'd like to take this clap sound and let it modulate the wet value of the reverb. So again, we'll use a peak controller. I'll come back to my mixer view here, click on Insert 2, and insert another fruity peak controller. I'll come down and right click on the wet parameter on the reverb, go to link to controller, and in this drop down box right here, I'll come down to peak control, insert to peak. Hit accept. Now the last thing I have to do is just send the clap sound to insert to, and we'll have some modulation. As you can see, it's bringing that wet value up a bit every few beats. Let's modify these settings a little bit to make it slightly more exciting. Now I'm going to leave the base value at zero because I want the wet parameter to stay all the way down by default and only come up on certain peaks that come out of the peak controller. Now I'm going to leave the base value at zero for now and I'm just going to work with volume. So I'll bring volume pretty far up here and it'll make the wet value go just about all the way up. Now my last task will be to manipulate the decay parameter so that the wet parameter doesn't come down so quickly every time it's triggered by the peak controller. Now of course the last thing we have to do is unmute this fruity peak controller so that we can hear the original triggering sound. And there we go. Now as I hinted at before, I'd also like to modulate the high cut parameter with something, and I think the kick drum would be a good candidate for that. So I'll come over here to insert 3, I'll choose another fruity peak controller, I'll unmute it, come down here to the high cut parameter on the reverb, link to controller, and select peak control, insert 3, peak. And now all that remains is actually to send the kick drum channel 
to that insert. So I'll send kick drum to insert 3. And now we'll have our modulation. Watch the height cut parameter. Let's briefly recap what we've gone over here. Most of the stuff in this video you've already seen. I had some sounds loaded up and a pattern put together already. And it really came down to me wanting to find a way to add a little bit more animation to this beat. I chose the Fruity Peak controller because it turns audio signals into modulation data, which itself can control device parameters such as high cut or wet. First decide what parameter you want to control, and then decide which sound you'd like to control that parameter with. For instance, I have my kick drum here. I wanted my kick drum to affect the high cut parameter rhythmically. So I sent my kick drum to the proper insert, I brought up my mixer channel here, went to the insert that corresponded with the one I sent my kick drum to, set up the Fruity Peak controller, and then I right clicked on the parameter that I wanted to be controlled, went to Link to Controller, and chose Peak Control, Insert 3, Peak. Once I hit Accept there, I had my kick drum modulating the high cut parameter on the reverb. I'll see you next time for more music production tips and tricks. Stay creative!